bit of coffee. Well, today we want to have a look at this great movie from 1989, I think, with Robin Williams. And uh, I believe it is Dead Poet Society. Remember Carpe Diem, Seize the Day? Well, let's get situated and uh, let's talk about Dead Poet Society for a little bit and see if uh, we can get a little bit of uh, motivation, inspiration this morning here with coffee time, all right? All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. What is poetry? That page has been ripped out, sir. Well, if I were somebody else's book. They're all ripped out, sir. <laughs> what do you mean they're all ripped out? Sir, we... Never mind. Read. Understanding Poetry by Dr. J. Evans Pritchard, Ph.D. To fully understand poetry, we must first be fluent with its meter, rhyme, and figures of speech. Then ask two questions. One, how artfully has the objective of the poem been rendered? And two, how important is that objective? Question one rates the poem's perfection. Question two rates its importance. And once these questions have been answered, determining the poem's greatness becomes a relatively simple matter. If the poem score for perfection is plotted on the horizontal of a graph... Mr. Keating, they made everybody Why understand it. Because you got to believe me, it's true. I do believe you, Tom. Leave, Mr. Keating. But it wasn't his fault. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. One more outburst from you or anyone else, and you're out of this school. Leave, Mr. Keating. I said leave, Mr. Keating. my friends are we good to go oh man so for most of you this is morning time but in a weird way for me it's kind of like supper time because I work at night making donuts and uh, I'm drinking coffee but really I got to go to bed pretty soon because I was up all night baking right we'll talk about that later but you know what's pretty cool is there are so many good movies out there and like these stories they're just 
giving me the opportunity to have my eyes open to my own life. I love how movies and books and music just kind of shines a light on my own situation. So today's uh, movie is Dead Poet Society with uh, Robin Williams and Ethan Hawke is in there too. Now we're calling this Choosing Captains because if you've ever seen the film you understand why that title is appropriate. Dead Poet Society. It's set in an uppity uppity boys school in 1959. It features the unorthodox teaching methods of English instructor John Keating and the secret revival of an old literary club, the Dead Poet Society. While the school's values include tradition, honor, discipline, and excellence, Keaton models creativity, spontaneity, and individual daring. He challenges his students to look for the poetry within their own hearts and to seize the day. Carpe diem. Remember that. That's just a great word, right? Carpe diem. Seize the day. You'll never get this day again as long as you live. So do something with it, right? To discover their true selves languishing beneath the stifling boundaries of expectations set by society, the school, their parents, their peers. As a result, each student faces a different antagonist, undergoes a tailor-made transformation, and experiences a unique reward. For example, Todd must overcome his self-consciousness to find his creative voice. Neil must stand up to his father to pursue his dream as an actor. And Charlie faces the wrath of the headmaster Nolan when he publishes a defiant article in the school paper. Now, when tragedy occurs, the students are interrogated individually and played against each other to bring about Professor Keating's termination. In a powerful closing scene, as we just saw, right? Like, I mean, uh, I got goosebumps watching that. In this powerful closing scene, Keating returns to his classroom to pick up his belongings. One by one, the students stand on their desks and salute their mentor, quoting Walt Whitman's poem, Oh, Captain, my Captain! Oh, Captain, my Captain! Their beloved teacher leaves knowing that even though the boys have suffered, the authorities have not stolen the lessons that he planted in their hearts. Now, Dead Poet Society is such an inspiring portrayal of audacity versus control that the audience might be tempted to adopt the philosophy of the movie, but the worldview promoted by Keating is not exactly synonymous with that of Jesus. The primacy of personal freedom and self-actualization are often idols that compete for our allegiance to the Lordship of Jesus. Or in this case, I mean, whoever your higher power is, you know, there's always going to be this pull of, of the world and, and yourself and the flesh and then your, your God or whatever you know to be God. And there's always this, you know, a hard to line the two up sometimes. Ultimate truth and personal destiny are not found simply by casting off restraint to do what is right in our own eyes, but through submission. And whether it's to Jesus or Buddha or Allah or Confucius, you know, most major world religions out there require some form of submitting to the higher power. You know, and that's why it's important that you take time to investigate for yourself, you know, like... If there is truth out there to be found, seek and you shall find, you know? And I believe that when you find the truth, the truth will set you free. It has for me. But I'm not going to just spit out everything that I believe to be, to be true. I mean, as people ask me, I'm always prepared. I'm always ready to give a reason for the hope that I have. But, you know, I think we're all on a journey and we all got to take... You know, these moments that come up in life to investigate why are we here? What are we what are we doing? Well, why do we do what we do? 
What's the purpose of life? What happens when we die? You know, we got to figure these things out. And, you know, you can only go so far on your own. And then you got to kind of investigate a little deeper, read some books, talk to people, go listen to conferences. And, you know, eventually you have to take a step of faith, no matter what you choose to believe in. Because there will always be gaps. There will always be questions. Eventually you have to have something that fills in the gaps. And I believe that's faith. Uh, let's see, where are we going with this little book here? So, I'm not even sure where to go with this one. You know, I'm going to read this, and maybe somebody can, uh, you know, help me understand this, because I, I'm trying to think about this, and I don't even get it. So let's put the book away. When I watch Dead Poet Society, I see a professor who cared about teaching his students how to learn. You know, not so much as relaying information as opening up a, a, a door, opening up the world to them, uh, you know, through poetry and, 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 and literary arts. You know, he kind of, you know, helped them understand a little bit more depth to the life that they were living you know and and obviously these young men were affected by this mentor this teacher you know because at the end of the movie when when everything's on the line for them you know they're in this high class prep school you know one mistake and it could affect the rest of their lives they they don't really rebel but they decide to kind of make the point that this professor made a difference in their lives and they were willing to stand up and 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 to let the world know that they believed that he did the best job teaching that he could and when they stand on their desks you know it's kind of like you know what are you willing to do for your leader are you willing to stand up when everything else around you says stay sitting down you know, and, and I've had some great teachers in my life and some great mentors. And, you know, uh, I would stand up for them, you know. And and I think as a, as a person of faith, you know, I believe in the big guy upstairs. And, you know, I, I have a faith that compels me to make a difference in this world, you know. And, you know, I think when your convictions are, are rooted very deep, you know, you, you find this strength inside that you never know was there and you're willing to stand up even when you're standing up alone sometimes. So, the honest thing is, I thought I had kind of a good little inspiring quote here this morning or inspiring teaching, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I should have read the book earlier, right? But uh, maybe I'll prep a little bit more. But nonetheless... Dead Poets Society, I thought was a great film. I enjoyed it. I understand the importance of having good teachers in your life, and hopefully you do too. And you're never too old to learn new things. As a matter of fact, whenever you think you've kind of reached the top of the mountain, where you've kind of, you get, yeah, there's the pinnacle, man, you, that's when you start to go down. That's when you start to die. When you think that you've learned it all. You got no more room to figure out anything else in life. That's a sad state of affairs. So my encouragement is always keep seeking. Always keep learning. Always find teachers. There's always somebody. Young people can, old people could teach you. Young people could teach you. People your own age can teach you. You just got to have the humility to let others speak life into you. Speak truth into you. And you can grow. You can learn. And don't be one who just soaks it all up. Just like we talk about. You know, having life breathed into you. You don't have to wait till you have some papers hanging on the wall to go teach somebody else or speak truth into somebody else's life. You know, when 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 an opportunity reveals itself, take a moment. You know, 
show somebody something. I don't care if it's teaching them how to change their oil, you know, or uh, teaching them how to bake some cookies or barbecue a steak. You know, teach somebody how to read, how to teach, teach somebody how to speak English. I don't know what it is. But it's just as valuable for you to be a student and to be a teacher. I suppose that's how I'll wrap up today's coffee time. So tomorrow, I have a special uh, presentation from a friend of mine who went to a conference. Uh, we're going to have that up there tomorrow, and maybe we can get the, another video up tomorrow. Maybe maybe two videos tomorrow, March 19th, and uh, we're starting this book, this book called Epic. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I believe it's right here. So tune in tomorrow, and we're going to start this book. It's called Epic. I'm excited about it, and it is the story that God is telling and the role that you are to play, the crucial role you are to play. All right, my friends, have a great day, and we'll uh, get you later.